Welcome to the EA Congress 2015 in Mannheim. I'm sitting here with Professor Ilya Sigal. What brings you to Mannheim? I gave a lecture yesterday, property rights and the efficiency of bargaining. What would you say is the overall theme of your research? How to design mechanisms to make people better off. And this is an uh, old idea in economics in the 19th century. People started thinking about changes in the economic system. They're thinking about how we could improve the system to make people better off. I'm thinking about uh, not only incentives, of course incentives are important, but on the one hand this is something that computer scientists are usually thinking about. On the other hand, economists have actually also thought about this for a long time, starting probably with Hayek, who wrote about how the market is a good mechanism for allocating uh, resources. One reason it's good and it cannot be duplicated by replicated by central planning is because it's impossible to collect all the information that people have that's needed to find uh, optimal decisions, while in a market mechanism only using prices, which is a very short summary of all the necessary information that's needed to make good decisions, you can find good decisions in this in this way. So one question is what kind of market mechanisms you can use in different settings, um, how you can economize on communication, and also how you can design mechanisms that are computationally feasible in environments that could be fairly complicated. Can you provide us with a practical example? In the 90s, uh, for the first time in the world, um, uh, the US government started uh, selling electromagnetic spectrum using auctions. It was immediately recognized what a big success this has been. A success in terms of raising money or in terms of allocative efficiency or? Well, uh, I guess the easiest way to measure it is by the amount of money that it raised. So it, it uh, has raised, since the beginning, it has raised hundreds of billions of dollars just in the US uh, overall. But uh, clearly this also tells us something about the allocative efficiency because it means that the people who are getting spectrum or the companies getting spectrum are the ones that can get uh, the highest value out of it. I only got involved in this fairly recently, but the kind of most complicated part of the problem was actually not selling spectrum, but buying spectrum from TV stations. Can you explain? The idea is that we are already running out of usable spectrum, but the spectrum that is currently used, some of it is not used very efficiently. In particular, uh, we are talking about TV spectrum. It ha happens that people don't watch as much over their TV. You know, some stations maybe are watched a lot, but other stations not very much. They don't have a lot of value, and it would be ben uh, beneficial for everybody if the stations were able to sell their spectrum. You want to do it in a cheap way. You want to compensate the stations fairly but uh, not uh, let them hold out for a uh, you know, big share of the pie. So you want to have a competitive auction uh, and there is a big computational complexity involved in retuning the stations who you don't buy to the remaining channels. And that's a problem I've been working on in the past couple of years. So what is the specific solution that you propose to solve this problem? So one part is to create competition um, among the uh, TV stations, uh, you, you should define the property rights of the stations in such a way that uh, stations cannot hold out for a specific frequency. Uh, so instead, they'll have to be more or less substitutable and compete uh, to sell at a fair price. Uh, and so this was achieved um, by um, a law that was passed in uh, 2012, which uh, gives the government the right to retune stations to different frequencies as long as their coverage area is preserved. It's not clear how much you would compensate the stations that you're buying in a way that would make it clear to them that they should not try to manipulate the auction, they should try to be truthful. And so the solution is a particular kind of auction, heuristic auction that makes it very easy for stations to participate and to bid truthfully in the auction. Abstracting from this particular problem, what are the key insights of your research? So one topic that I've worked on recently is the role of markets in um, finding good outcomes. One tool of mechanism design is called the revelation principle, which says that if you want to find a good mechanism, you might as well use a mechanism in which everybody uh, reveals all the information to some central planner. 
Uh, so it's good as a theoretical tool, but in practice, um, we don't think it, it will work well uh, in many cases because re revealing your, your preference over some complicated decision is just impossible. So, so one thing I, I was able to prove is a, some kind of pretty general theorems about when uh, the most informationally efficient way to find a good outcome is by uh, finding some kind of uh, supporting prices where people will um, choose their best uh, outcomes given the prices and if the outcomes are coordinated this will prove that the outcome is good from the social viewpoint. So instead of using this kind of uh, uh, full revelation mechanisms uh, you, you should just use the price based mechanisms and this is kind of one way to motivate market design. So this is a theoretical result uh, but it has some applications to uh, what kind of market mechanisms you want to use in, in different situations. Another theme which I talked about yesterday in the lecture is uh, property rights. Uh, the design of property rights will um, determine how easy or hard it will be for people to bargain to, towards uh, an efficient allocation. And so um, in the example of this particular auction, the particular property rights of stations um, were uh, given that they had the right to coverage but not to any specific frequency was very important for uh, minimizing the potential for holdout and allowing uh, for designing uh, a good, fairly efficient mechanism. What is the key takeaway for practitioner from your work? You have to talk to economists when you design your policy because all the problems are different and uh, we uh, are not in this situation where there's a one size fits all. When you design economic mechanisms, you have to think about the kind of property rights that uh, they imply and what will happen in the future. Because even if you find a good allocation today, uh, then tomorrow you might have to change it. Another takeaway is when you are designing mechanisms, you have to think about price mechanisms. Uh, and the particular kind of price mechanisms that we are designing is um, based on uh, 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 it's called a clock auction and what happens is that you make price offers to people that are very attractive initially. So initially you make high price offers and then they're uh, being reduced. And this is the kind of mechanism which we expect to perform very well in practice. And I think uh, one important um, takeaway is that uh, um, clock auctions are, have some very attractive properties. Thank you very much, Professor Ilya Sigal. Thank you for having me.